Hey there, Rodrigo here for Textualize, and this is the seventh video in our series of building a stopwatch application. And this is the video where we're going to write some textual CSS so, 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 so that the application on the right looks like the application that we're going for, like the end product that you can see either in the very first video of the series or in the written tutorial. So again, in case you missed it, I'm using the textual run dash dash dev command so that I have live editing in my CSS. For example, if I delete the layout or actually if I do something like if I change the height of the button, so button height equals five or six, if I save it, I see the changes live. So there's a link below to a video that teaches you how to install the dev tools, which are the thing you need to have this capability. Otherwise, you can just write the CSS and you can just keep on interrupting the app and running it again. That also works. So let's go ahead and style our app. So the very first thing we're going to do is fix this issue right here, where I can't see all of the stopwatch widget because my terminal is not large enough. And so in order to do this, what we need to say is that, well, the stopwatch widget, so the stopwatch widget should have a minimum width of, let's say, 50, right? And when you do that, you, I don't know if you noticed that a scroll bar popped up in here. Second. Sorry about that. So a scroll bar popped up in there. Let me delete it. Save. Disappeared. Let me paste it. Oops. Let me go back, save, it pops up. Because this is narrower than the 50 columns I mentioned, we get a scroll bar that lets you go all the way to the right. I'm doing something wrong. Why can't I use this scroll bar? So the mouse is so large that I don't even know what part of the mouse actually clicks, the mouse pointer. So yeah, now you get the scroll bar to see the remainder of the widget. It still feels like it's too small, but as soon as we fix the fact that the start and the stop buttons are not shown at the same time ever, it's going to be fine. So yeah, this is what we have right now, and we're going to keep going. All right, so let's do the following. Let's add maybe some padding and some margin to move, keep things apart from each other. Let's do the following. Let's say that there's a margin of one, so that's going to separate stopwatches, stopwatches from surrounding things. And now let's say that there's a padding of one. And what that does is inside the stopwatch, things are one cell apart from the border. Now this is difficult to see. So actually what I should do is and my bad, I'm going to start by changing the background color of the stopwatch and then changing it to boost. Now, this can't really be seen unless you take a look at the time display over there. So the color has changed a bit and it's not very noticeable yet. It's about to be. So, as you can see, there's a slight difference in the shade here. And this is going to be more noticeable when we do the thing I was doing with the margin and the padding. So, Adding a margin of one, what this does is notice that the shade here is all the same. So the margin of one takes the whole stopwatch and creates some space around surrounding, um, uh, against surrounding widgets. So the stopwatches push each other out and the stopwatch is no longer touching the header or the edge there. So this has to be in the color of the background this over here, this region, because it's not part of the stopwatch. So that's why we do not see the background. Or actually, again, let's make this blue so it's very obvious when we can see the background. So there's the background on the right. This is the background of the stopwatch, but it's not shown over here. Now, if you add padding of one, now what you're saying is inside the stopwatch, Sub widgets should be one cell apart from the stopwatch, and so that's why you get this border here, this blue border, which isn't really a border, it's just the background of the stopwatch. So now we can move this 
make this boost again. So it's a slightly different shade of gray. Now you can toggle dark mode, you get a slightly different shade of very light gray. So this is margin padding. We have the minimum width. I'm checking my notes over there. And the only thing we're missing is setting a specific height. So let's just lock in the height of the stopwatch. Let's see, does this influence how it looks? Actually, this might be superfluous, but just to be sure and to make sure that other widgets and other components know the height of a stopwatch, we'll just say that the height of our stopwatch is 5, which is these 5 cells. So the button has height 3 plus the padding. That makes 5. So this, this sets the height of the stopwatch pretty much in stock. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that the start button and the stop button show up on the left, the reset button shows up on the right, and the time display shows up in the middle. So how do we do that? Notice that in here I just talked about the start buttons and the stop buttons and the reset buttons as a class of things, as a set of things, right? All of the start buttons will be on the left, all of the reset buttons will be on the right, and so what I want to do is, in my CSS, I want to be able to target all set buttons. I want to target all of the reset buttons. I want to target all of the stop buttons. I want to target all of the start buttons. And right now, the only thing I can do is target all buttons. All of them. So what I need to do is, I need to go to my Python code. And inside my widget stopwatch, when I'm creating my buttons, I need to give them IDs. So I need to be I need to give them a string to be able to identify them. And so the ID of the button start, it could be just start. And the ID of the button stop could be just stop. And the sorry, the reset. The ID of the button reset could just be reset. So these IDs now mean that I have a way of targeting the reset button specifically or the stop button specifically or the start button specifically. Now this was a change in the Python code, so now I do have to restart my application so that the buttons now have those IDs. And now what I can do is I can go to my CSS and say, well, let me target all buttons with ID start. And the way you do that is you write a hash. The hash for the selector says you're going to target a specific ID. And then you just type the name of the ID. And for starters, let me make the start buttons taller. So as you can see, the start buttons, they look taller. The start looks weird because they're inside a stopwatch with a height of 5. If I delete the height over there, the height of the stopwatch increases to accommodate for the, the taller start buttons. But this is not what we want. So instead of making the height of the start button this big, let's actually say that the start button should be docked to the left. And now this seems as if it has no impact. But if we also say that the stop buttons should be docked to the left. Now notice that the stop buttons are on top of the start buttons because they were both docked to the left. And if we dock the reset buttons to the right, right, now this is starting to look a bit more like what we want. So the thing is, start and stop buttons are on top of each other. That's kind of okay, because we only need to display one at a time, right? There's never, we never need to start and stop at the same time. So we can show the start button in the beginning, and then we can swap it out for the stop button when we start the stopwatch. So actually, the stop buttons, we're going to say that their display is none. So we don't want to display them. And so the start button is the one that's shown. Now, what else can we do right here? Well, we can take the time display and we can center the text, right? Might as well. So what we're going to do is to target all of the time displays, we can just target the custom widget, so time display. And we can do what? We can say that the height is three. So now this change was not visible, but again, if you add some background, you'll see that now the background has 8.3, but before this, it was only 1. 
So this is useful, setting the height to 3 is useful because now you can do something like content align. So notice how the time display takes up all of the available space here between the buttons and we want to align the text, so the content of the widget, in the middle. And so you write content-align center middle. There you go. Now there's the center and the middle because you can align vertically and horizontally separately. I never know which is which, so let's just give it a try. Okay. So first it's the you control whether it's in the left, on the left, in the center, or on the right. You want center, obviously. And the middle, you can specify top, middle, or bottom. And in this case, we want middle. All of the different values, all of the different CSS rules, you can find them in the documentation. So you don't need to guess what their names are. You can just check the documentation. I'll leave a link below. And finally, let's get rid of that background. Finally, let's dim the text a little bit by setting the text opacity to something like 60%, so that the text is dimmed slightly while the stopwatch is inactive. So this was the CSS, and the stopwatch looks like this right now. So it's, it's looking much better much better than before. You can toggle dark mode, you can see that the color of the text changes automatically to increase, to, to have the maximum um, contrast. So if the buttons are light, the text is dark, and if the buttons are dark, the text is light, so that's cool. And actually, this is another very important thing. You only get this, notice that the background color of the stopwatch itself, so this thing, this shade right here, it's changing when I press D, sorry about that. And why is it changing? Because in here, you used the dollar sign boost. So that's a variable, that's a CSS variable. And when you toggle the dark and the light mode, that variable changes the values. So this is different from setting it, say, to blue, because blue is always blue. So if you toggle, it's still blue. So whenever possible, whenever you're styling your widgets and your apps and whatever, Whenever possible, make use of these variables because they were chosen carefully so that when you toggle the different modes, things are still readable, are still they still look nice. Alright, so yeah. Go ahead and make use of these CSS variables whenever possible. So this was a lot, probably. I hope this is looking better. I hope you enjoy this. I hope you enjoy the look of this. And in the upcoming videos, what we're going to do is we're going to wire things up because we have buttons, but they do nothing, right? So we're actually going to implement the functionality of our application. I'll see you soon. Bye.